And welcome in, everybody. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Name's Digital Dragon. One in there, Shaldell, one Raz. Shatter. Nick Nick, welcome in. Feed the Hungry Rabbit. Yep, that's what we're going to try and do today. In fact, I will tell you, you know, I, I meant to have this on, I just forgot about it. But, uh, we do have our our uh, little bunny hat, little bunny ears, you know, complete with the We do have our bunny hat. Uh, we will probably throw that on every now and then through the stream. But uh, yeah. So for those of you that don't know or, or have not been aware, we have been building a Deep Fried Hero Trident 350 kit. And as part of that kit, it came with several upgrades. Um, it had the titanium backers for the X and Y rails. It had a kinematic bed mounting system. Um, it's got a one stick of disco lights. I don't know why only one, so I may get a second one. Add two down the side, or one down each side. Um, and then it also came with a six cart enraged rabbit carrot feeder V1. And so what I decided is I've never built an enraged rabbit carrot feeder, but they just announced V2, so I might as well uh, upgrade it to V2. So I went out and I bought a um, an upgrade kit from two different sources on AliExpress. One was Triangle Labs, and the other was Lead labs um not sure what the difference is yet um i also bought a big tree tech mmb board um with four drivers somehow i got two boards so i now have two upgrade kits and i've got two boards so i guess we're going to wind up building two of these one i'll do on stream and the other one I'll pick which of my other Vorons is going to get it so I can do some color matching and we'll build a second one uh, for the shop as well. Um, and this is going to start kind of our our color changing multi-material series of streams. So we're going to build an Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder to go on our 350 Trident, um, which is sitting down here and then in the corner underneath these two boxes is our black box tool changer that we did the frame build on this past summer. We do have the Trident 350. For all intents and purposes, it pushed plastic. We're done. We will do the skirts and the um, panels and stuff a little bit later once we have the ERCFA done and we're ready to do testing. Because I'm gonna, I possibly will have to be doing some flipping over and doing some additional wiring, and I just don't want to keep adding more and more, using my hand holds panels on it until I'm really ready for. It. Um, a couple of the other things that we do have for this, I did get in the PG7 uh, glands that we'll use for the umbilical. So I'll be able to add that on. And I did get a EFT 35 SPI display. So the kit originally comes with a uh, 12864, you know, the standard uh, rotating dial LED or uh, LED screen. I wanted to go a clipper screen for this build because the Happy Hair has some additional controls or the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder that works with Clipper Screen. So we're gonna try that out. If I want a bigger screen, we'll have to do some adjustments to the electronics because this does have a Big Tree Tech Manta M5P board with a CB1 module on it, which limits us to either an SPI display or a uh, HDMI display. That's kind of right there. Uh, also on the table, besides a cup of coffee, because something we're known for is coffee. 
is we have a few parts laid out here. So everything that's in this part, uh, this container, and the servos, some wire here, this all came as part of the DFH kit. Um, so this is the stuff to make the ERCFA V1.1. We will be using some of this stuff. And then everything else, well, the motors came with that as well. But the, um, the extrusion, our two linear rods, our long D staff, this came with the Triangle Labs upgrade kit, which has everything we need here to bring it up to date. So we've got all of the uh, end stops and as well as some pre-cut heat shrink tubing. We've got some extra sets of drive gears because it's supposed to go from a six to an eight carriage. Um, some more ECAS fittings and bits and bobs there. Um, various screws. We've got the Binky or Blinky encoder. Um, some extra wiring with, I believe, pre made um, labeled heat shrink. And then we've got two sets of LEDs. We have uh, one set that's an LED strip. We have another set that is just LEDs. So these are set to go on the Rage Rabbit Carrot Tail, which is the built-in buffer system. And these are designed for use on the actual Enrage Rabbit Carrot Field. Um, it talks about preparing these ahead of time. I'm gonna hold off on doing that this stream, even though this is a preparation stream. I'm not going to solder the uh, the actual that's at this time. With that said, we will, like I said, we'll kind of bounce back and forth a little bit, but we'll bring up the manual here. Um, we do have a separate build guide for the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder and for the Enraged Rabbit Cotton Tank. There's also a separate build guide for the filament cutting system aka the Enraged Rabbit Filometrics matrix. And that's already built into our tool head. We did that as part of our actual printer build, as well as installing two sensors. That's already there in red. Um, so got our table of contents, printing guidelines. I did um, use the I'll say the configuration spreadsheet and printed out the parts based on that spreadsheet. Um, so we're ready to go in that aspect. Um, and then the rest of this we'll be working on throughout today. I don't, I'm gonna put some things up that I don't think we're gonna need today for this part of the build, um, unless we get a lot further than I'm anticipating going today. I think that'll be good for now. Um, now, a couple of things on the print guide. I did get everything printed out. There are certain pieces that are supposed to be the primary color, accent color, clear, and I still need to print these little clear knob pieces, not knob pieces, diffusers for the LEDs. That'll go on the ERCFA. Um, and there's also some other pieces that go in the cotton tail. And I was looking and literally, if I try and, so it calls for these pieces to be translucent because you're gonna be putting an LED. Now, if I were to print this in clear PET G, and try and do the, you know, make it transparent or the glass type of look. Each one of these is gonna take a day because you have to print very high temp and very slow to get it to be as translucent as possible. Chances are no light's gonna get through this. So I'm probably not going to put lights on these. Um, or if I decide, yes, I do wanna put lights on these, 
Then I will reprint these and I will probably get some natural ABS because um, that might be the best bet at getting these somewhat translucent so that a light placed in the back will work all the way through this. I, I don't know. Because from the looks of it, the LED is supposed to be lighting, you know, through, facing through the actual part here. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, either that or I will watch some uh, other videos to see if just my understanding is wrong. And yes, this is a MMU um, unit. So this is a multi-material unit. Um, it is uh, eight lanes. So we'll have the ability to run eight different colors up into this. And when I was saying that we're going to be doing multiple MMUs this year, We've got the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder. We've also got a Crad Rat that we are going to be reprinting and rebuilding um, to match the colors, this color scheme right here versus the blue and black, because this is going to go on the Annex Engineering K3. So this is a similar thing, but a little bit different. And one of the differences is on the Crad Rat, you have a, um, oh, what am I thinking of? You just have a bearing on one side on the lane, and then your drive gear is actually on your selector. Where in the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder, you have a separate set of Bontech drive gears for each lane, very similar to, um, well, I was going to say the Prusa MMU, but that's different as well. The Prusa MMU is more like the Trad Rack. So we're going to have some different, you know, different thoughts and, and ideas as far as the MMUs. Speaking of a Prusa MMU, we are going to be getting one of those in as well for our Mark IV printer. So we'll have three different types of MMUs and we'll have the actual tool changer of the black box. Hey, welcome on in, Ozzy Royal Nomi. Welcome in. Um, so the version of Tradrack that I built was during their closed beta, and it did not have a sensor for each lane. However, um, there's new versions of the files. I need to print those out and do some looking when I go to rebuild it. Okay, so with that being said, um, we're going to keep working through here. There are a couple of pieces that are also listed as O for opaque. Um, and they say, you know, pick a material, an opaque material that light cannot penetrate, preferably black. Um, as you can see, my parts are blue and pink, um, pop blue and pop pink. These are plenty of opaque. I don't think we're going to have an issue. Um, various bits and bobs of hardware that they call out. Some Allen wrenches. Um, other tools that we're going to need along the way. Things behind the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder. Once again, the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder is the actual MMU piece. The Enraged Rabbit Cottontail will be the piece that adds on to the back. Let me show you. So the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder is this front piece. The Enraged Rabbit Cottontail is the rear piece back here, which is the buffering system that also has the mount for the Big Tree Tech MMB board. Okay. And then you'll have the Enraged Rabbit Filament Matrix, the filament cutter, which we have built into the tool head. The tool head centers were sensors. We're running both of them. So one before the extruder drive gear, the Clockwork 2 extruder, and one between the extruder and the tool head. And then the happy hair is the firmware. That's the entire ecosystem. Your Brad Rat. Oh wow. Royal Nomi.
Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Um, on my, on the, when I had my MMU on the Prusa Mark III, the flag for the filament runout sensor that you move from inside the extruder up to what we call the chimney stack, I did have to print that in black um, rather than any other color. So if needed, there's two things. One, I can Sharpie that area, or two, I can just reprint that piece in black if need be. I do have that capability. And no, I did not print the calibration tool and check everything. We're, we're going to wing it and hope. So this is the part of the preparation that I'm definitely going to do, and that's we're going to click into each page here and go through and do our heat sinks, heat sink, our heat set inserts. Um, I did also dump all of my heat sets into my heat set bin. That's all the M3 by M345. So got all of our heat sets here, and we are going to go through one page at a time and dump those in or set those. And also, if you were here for the black box build, you know we've got the M4 on here, so we're going to have to pop that off and put our M3 back on. So yeah, I have yet to build the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder of any flavor. Um, I've built the MMU, um, the MMU 2S for the um, Prusa systems. So I look forward to doing the MMU 3. I've got it on order. I'm just waiting for it to ship. I don't think they're shipping until later next month. So. We'll get that shipped. Um, and then trad rack. I have all the parts here. I just need to get. I just need to get more filament. I think I need uh, one of the colors of the filament to be able to reprint the parts. And then it's just a matter of reprinting the parts and getting it into the schedule. To do How long is this build, Royal Nomi? Good question. It'll probably be a little bit. Probably going to take a few streams. Um, and the build is, I'll say, probably the easy part. The harder part is going to be actually getting it dialed in. You know, something like the AMS is factory set up, and it's the location for where you set your AMSs is pretty close and I think it's got the enough software in there that if you do like set it off to the side or set it on a shelf and run a longer cable is picking up and using the sensors to do things. Um, here we're going to have to probably do some tweaking. Um, so all I'm going to do here is click through each one of these pages, grab the part in question, do the necessary heat sets. And then on each page, what I like is they have a link to go back to that page that has the listing. So here we'll be able to go through and get all of our uh, M3 heat set inserts done right on right off the bat. So I kind of like that they did this. So, and of course, right off the bat, we're going to have a couple of inserts. They're just going to be a pain in the tuchus to get to, so that, that'll make life fun. At least we get it out of the way on the first part. How is everybody's week going? Mine has started off pretty good so far. We had layoffs a couple of weeks ago, and now we're we've started the 
Uh, let's play the personnel shuffle and start shuffling everybody around. So the two that are going to go on this side here, um, I'm going to hold off on that one just yet and do all the easier ones to get to. Um, so we're going to have one underneath and then two on the front here. So we'll get these going. And then that break already. Wow, that's. I have no idea how they started working their new ad algorithm. It seems like it goes like there's a lot more ads, or at least more frequently. Yeah, work's just been fun because after the announcements today of the of the new org structure, then of course it's everybody's asking questions. What does this mean to me specifically? Some teams and my team's going to be one of them. I think is not going to stay fully intact. We're gonna we're gonna morph some. Flat. And then these two here, they talk about using your iron to heat it up and then pull it through with screws. That's actually what I'm going to try and do is grab a long screw here, try and get these heated up and through. which ought to be fun. Hey, Brent, how's it going, nerd? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome on in. Yeah, so I've ordered the MMU-3 for the Mark IV. I know they've got them out for the Mark Threes. I think you've got them on your Mark Three, correct? And I just saw you doing some MMU stuff. Um... I've ordered the MMU-3 that will go with the Mark IV. And once that comes in, we'll build that. This is the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder version 2. Which, of course, works with Borons and any flipper-based printer. I'm just trying to set these heat sets and of course it's in a weird spot so you can't really come in directly on it so I'm just trying to heat it up and then pull it through with the screw
one of those. No? Yeah, soldering all the LEDs is going to be fun. Um, That's why I'm going to hold off for now on doing the ones for the um, for the trucks because it'll talk about doing all your heat sets and then doing your um, oh what you call it. You'll do the heat sets and then it'll want you to do the um, the motor wires to length and the LEDs. And I'm going to hold off for now because one, I don't think we're going to get that far today. And then two, um, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to psych myself up for it. But yeah, we're going to be doing the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder and I've got enough to do two of these kits. So I'll do one for the Trident 350 in the Pop blue and pop pink color scheme. Right at 350, yeah. And then I'll do another one down the road for one of the other Vorons. And then I have a trad rack that I built before under the closed beta and never got online because I wanted to put it on the A3. And I did I did a different color scheme on the K3 than I had anticipated. So now I need to reprint all the parts and they've got a new set of parts out. So I'm going to basically reprint all the parts and upgrade it to the latest version of the trad rack. And then we'll build the MMU-3 for the Mark IV when it comes in. And then we've got the black box build that we started on Sunday. And the black box is going to be a five head tool changer, so thank Prusa XL. Okay, there we go. So we've got the, yes, two in the top, two in the side, two in the little front pegs there, one at the bottom, and that, that part's done. So we'll jump back to page 15. We'll go down to the second part, which is page 32. This is the next one that I have in a while. Almost like I looked at the manual and figured out what parts I was going to Um. Yeah, so the, the DuPont piece is primarily if you're going to be orientate my part right this hole that hole first the DuPont part is primarily or initially if you're going to run your wires all the way back to the MCU under your printer it's so it, it's a way of disconnecting and removing the enraged rabbit carrot feeder from the overall printer and if you're going to do the local board which means you're going to run CAN bus or a USB up to a secondary board that's you know say the well oh, let's say a big tree tech MMB or the um the easy board the ERC for easy board then you can just run the wires directly to the board and then like I said run a long 
wire for the CAN bus or USB and power. Okay, so we got the top and we got that one. Now we go to the part on the ground. We pick it up, we're kind of looking at it like this, and we got one, two, three on this side. We grab something to use as a platform here to make this easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're going to be doing the MMB or the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder board and you're going to attach it to the cottontail, right? Um, so once again, on the cottontail, you have the ability, um, this box right here on the side, let me do it full display. So this front piece is the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder. The back piece is your buffer system, the cotton tail. And this box, this vented box on the side, would be the box for your uh, Big Tree Tech board or your uh, Easy board. And so that way you can keep all your wires for your Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder and the cotton tail close and not have to worry about long cable runs all the way back down from motors and everything and doing like this big long umbilical. So these two and then Like I said, we're just jumping through here and doing our heat set inserts all in one shot. Just to streamline this process so we don't have to keep getting it out and putting it up. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. One goes at the bottom. Hey, Timor, welcome on in. How's it going? And yeah, I like, you know, the MMB has four motors on it, but you only need two for trad rack or for um, ERCFA or for uh, even the, uh, the SMUF or any of the other MMU units. So that actually gives you two more motors that you can run. So you could potentially run, say, two of these because if you're running a CAN bus, you should be able to control two different ones if you had like an IDEX. Or okay, so this will be the fun one. So we're going to have our, our, call it the hook by crook. We need to put one down here, so there's going to be fun to do this one. Not much of a level surface. And I may wind up reprinting this part because for whatever reason, this one says, whoops. This one says, um, ERCFA Easy Board on it. We're not using the ERCFA Easy Board. We're using the MMB, or MMB. So if there's not one that says Big True Tech MMB on it, I think there's at least a blank one. So we may swap that out, or we may just say the heck with it and be, oh well. Just one there. Part, fourth part. Okay, so this is the selector piece. And we're going to have several places where um, 
heat sets go in on this. That one, the other one's going to come down here in this first gap there. Here. Okay, so this one, this one, B2, so we're going to flip it around, one right here. Hey, Stephen Poole, how's it going? Hope you're doing well, my friend. So far, all of these have been flush with the surface. Okay, now we're flipping it over. And you'll notice that there's some numbered pieces. This says, has a little one on it. This area here has a two. This area up here has a three. These, um, these are areas of uh, built-in, whatchamacallit, built-in support that we have to bust out. And I wasn't gonna bust these out just yet, but we have to bust out the two just to be able to get to the next spot that we need to put our heat set in. So very simply, we just used a flathead screwdriver, did a little bit of prying, and that part pops out very nicely. See a little bit of a stress whitening right there where it popped off that edge. Now we're going to be putting in a heat set insert down in this gap. And it goes down in there a pretty darn good way. It's almost all the way through. So, Talk about heating it up and pulling it through with a screw, but the problem is it's really hard to get it down in there. We'll see that I did melt the plastic a little bit on the side of my iron, so, but I don't think that's gonna cause me a problem. If anything, I might just need to scrape that area flat again, but I don't think structurally it's gonna cause any issue um, with this part and the way it goes. And I'm gonna leave the other, um, in place um, tabs for the time being that I'm just going through and doing our you wind up melting the spring hole either reprint the piece or try again or clean up the hole with a drill bit or size is 6.6 .6. use 6 point or 6 millimeter quarter inch or 760 okay there we go We'll have to see if this impacts the spring, then we may have to reprint this part. So we'll have to check that out once we get down to that level. So that was part four. This part is this piece here. Need two heat sets 
top here, and this is going to be for the um, cable chain. Okay. Those two are done. We're almost done. Got this piece here, which looks like the right side of the encoder. We're going to put three heat sets in this one. Hey, Lucas Player, how's it going? Welcome in. We're just doing some initial prep work and going through and doing all of our heat sets in one shot. Make it easier. I do my best not to burn the heck out of it. What I was doing there was putting a little bit of heat back in it and then using my the side of my workbench, which is metal, to make sure that it gets flush and seated with flush with the part. So I'm having to, uh, you know, there's, there's no real flat surface here, all at an angle. Trying to get it close and then using the flat part down here to make sure. like it and Last one. One on each side. Found out why the Wi Fi stuff is not working and wireless internet up for your PC. Now you get your printer with a cable. Oh, okay, gotcha.
Okay, and then we've got these two on the side here. Okay, it. those two are done and looks like we need to do two from this side here. And this will be for the other part of the table chain. And I believe is the last one of the heat set. We're now done with heat sets, or at least for the enraged rabbit carrot feeder. The Cottontail, I don't think, has any, but if it does, we'll do those when we get into that part. Get these out of the way. Okay. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey, Hobby Maine, how are you doing? Welcome on in, welcome on in. There's an issue that sticks with the latest catapult and clipper, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna be installing the latest catapult and clipper because we just did the install on this like a week ago, last week. So it's, it's, unless it came out like today, but even still, it shouldn't impact the MMB. I don't get the latest thing once we. Um, so here it talks about, you know, if you've got CAD software, bring up the CAD file and it'll help you along. But I really like the way they did the diagrams in here and I'll show you what I mean. Um, okay. So this is talking about doing the wiring for a remote MCU. So re when it says remote MCU, it means not on the IRCFA carrot tail assembly itself. So remote means going all the way back down to your main electron. Okay, so we're not gonna do that. Um, it says, uh, when we say local, we mean a buddy board or other dedicated MCU that will be mounted near the IRCFA to include the Big Tree Tech MMB uh, or an easy board skip to page 22. So we're not even going to look at this. We're just going to go straight to 22. Now it starts talking about um, wiring the LEDs, and there's a couple of different ways of doing the LEDs. It can be strip LEDs that you have to cut and then uh, solder back together or using the actual NeoPixels. We have the strip LEDs, 
and we're not going to, I'm not going to pre-wire those just yet. I'm going to go ahead and hold off for now and maybe do soldering later. Um, they didn't talk but we'll we'll worry about this as well the motors that came with the kit okay we've got our NEMA 14 this is the um NEMA 14 this is the one that actually rides on the collector it's got a certain amount of wire here if we need to extend it we will I don't think we will and then our NEMA 17 uh, I think that this should be the gear motor. Pancake would be the electric motor. Electric motor. So you look and it says, well, it calls for 200 millimeters of wire. That is not 200 millimeters of wire. Yeah, they gave us a JST that plugs in. We've got definitely enough wire here. I will figure out the length and I will cut and trim this when I go to put it to the board. Um, so yeah, I will do the end wiring on these because I'm not, I'm not sure. I may have to extend some. I may not, but I will do that a little bit later on. Let's get, we'll wire the LED. So we're going to get into the gearbox. Yay! So this is what we're looking for at the end of it. Have the main gearbox over here. We'll have our D shaft and our 2020 extrusion ready to go. Gives you the same view, just in a line drawing mode. Then it's going to give us an exploded view. This is calling out all the different bits and bobs and parts that we're going to need to use. Now, the one thing is, is it calls out a micro switch here, but it doesn't call out wire link. Or at least none that I see, unless it calls it out when we put the switch physically. We'll have to figure that out, how long to make the, uh, the wires. Hey, shenanigans, welcome on in. Welcome on in. So we've already done our heat insert, so we're good there. So we're going to start with the selector install installation. That's going to be on this piece here. We're going to need an MR85ZZ bearing. Because I'm going to go ahead and grab my main ERCFA kit, and once I'm out of parts out of this, I'll go digging in the in the parts that were in the new kit. So So the MR8ZZ, these are um these are basically the uh drive shafts. So if you're familiar with putting together a Bontech BMG gear set, this would be those uh, bearings for the shafts. If you need to try and differentiate between the bearings in the kit, that's one good way to find that out. So we'll need one of those. And it should press fit right down in that hole there. Scooch you that over there. Try and get it lined up. And press it down in there. And I'm not sure if it goes down where it would be flush with the top of the printed part. Or not. I'm looking from the back just to make sure there's no gap between the bearing and the print. Looks like it's in there all the way. So that does tell me that our 
bearing is going to sit a little bit proud of the printed part there. Then we're going to install an end stop. Be helpful to pre thread the M2 screws. Use an extra long one and a half if you have it. It talks about the micro switch orientation and which style micro switch you have. So, our micro switches. I think it had both variants. Um, maybe not. So all of these have the uh, the little levers on them. So built over bot. This is uh, as you can tell from our printed parts. This is the pop pink and the pop blue ASA polymaker filament. This is destined to go on the Trident. The Trident 350 that we were working on right here, the DFH kit. So we'll put this one here. We should have all the parts to make another one that we'll put on one of the other borons back here, uh, either a 2.4 or the other Trident. And then we'll have a trad rack that we'll build for the Annex engine. Well, we'll rebuild the trad rack for the K3. And then over here in the corner, Underneath these boxes is the black box printer build. Um, I'm just running out of places to stow stuff right now. So. But that's our chonky boy that's built with 4040 extrusions that we did the frame on on Sunday. Okay, so M2 screws. Now the M2. Screws. Oh. These are the M2 screws that they're referring to, but I only have three of them. Hopefully I don't need that just yet. So I've got these M2 screws that I'm going to use for right now, um, but there's only three of these in here, which seems like a weird number. Normally, I would assume that these would be M2 self-tappers, but they're not listed as M2 self-tappers. And two by eight. Dear Lord. I'm going to have to grab my white paper towel so you can see the tiny little black screws on there. Um, basically, we're just going to get our thread started. You don't want to go too deep. You just want to get your thread started so they'll bite so that you can get everything lined up. And then your um on your end stop, if your if you got the lever, then the lever uh faces downward. If you don't have a lever and you just have the little um, bumper, flip it the other way and you want the bumper at the bottom, which tells me that whatever's going to be triggering this is hitting near the bottom of the part here. So we're going to get this lined up and This lined up in the gap and 
screw it down in there. Yeah, no Urkva V2 on black box. I mean, black box is a tool changer, but could you imagine putting like um, a uh, 12 lane trad rack on each head of a black box? I mean, managing that in software would be crazy, but. Okay, so I, like I said, I'm still trying to figure out because there was nothing about. We're going to come back up here and just double, triple check. Wiring remote MCU. When we say local, we mean buddy board. Skip to page 22. We would skip to page 22. And here's everything about preparing wires for the remote MCU, which would have, um, you would wind up having DuPont connectors on this part that you could then plug in um, to do the rest of your runs. So interestingly enough, talks about running for your selector motor, your gear motor, and then servo, encoder, and end stop. So here's where it starts talking about the length for your end stop wire. It doesn't talk about any of these three wires yet, um, as far as the full length of these. For local, it just talks about wiring the motors. And wiring the LEDs. Hey, Maker Viking, how's it going? So, build over bot for the black box. Um, our first black box um, build series, uh, part one, doing the frame, I did this past Sunday, and it is up on YouTube now. So once again, I'm taking all of my videos and I am moving them over to YouTube because Twitch only lets you keep them for so long unless you do shenanigans and make them highlights. Um, so I'm going to be porting that stuff over to YouTube so it can live there longer. Yeah, TPU, you do not want to run through. Any type of image would be bad. Hey, Pez Liz, welcome in. Yeah. Um, and so something to think of too is the software for uh black box is rep rep firmware so run it all duet rep rep you know, rep rep firmware so most of your things like urkfa and trad rack are set for clipper so you really would be sitting there and having to basically define everything you're <laughs> um Yeah, I'm kind of thinking like right here that I need to, at the very least, solder up. I may have to take this out and solder up this end stop before I do this build with just some length of wire. Um, 
because if not, then we're going to have an issue later on and we're gonna to have to take this whole thing apart in order to, to do this. In fact, I wanna put this one in there anyhow. And it doesn't really matter. But let me go ahead and solder up a couple of wires on here real fast. Because if not, we are going to have problems down the road. And that's the one thing in these kits is they don't really sit here and say like, hey, this wire is for this. This wire is for that. It's just, hey, here's wire. Here's a long black. There's a red, green, white. Four wires, I would find up five, right? Power, ground, three total signals. This does kind of look like it. So we'll use the red, use the white. See, the only problem is, is this is probably not going to be long enough. Links would probably have cut for doing a six car, doing it to a certain standard. Ah, okay. All right. So this is the stuff that came with the. Original Urk. Let me look at the Urk for V2 kit, see what all it's got. As far as wiring goes, because it's got LEDs, LEDs. Odor. That's screw it. We'll just run some. We'll run some more cells. How about that? We'll make it work. Um, because I have wire somewhere. Not process. These are just an end stop, so it's not like I need 18 gauge wire or 20 gauge wire. But some 24 gauge wire would work just nice, huh? All right, so I got black and I've got red, so I will need a different color because I don't think I want to do black and red. And we're going to just say we'll need a length. We'll, we'll wind up cutting this down to whatever we wind up needing at the end. But for now, we've got a a bench length, which is uh, about a meter of wire there.
There's black, and then we'll go and grab something because all I have is black and red in the different gauges. Almost like I was planning on doing a bunch of different power wiring things. The other box of wire, which will give me a different color that I can use for the signal side. Wait four gauge, so wait four gauge up wire. Oh, it works. So, Once we get to the the other stuff, we may have some at least shorter lengths of pre-made wire that we'll go with, and we can extend those out if need be. Water, let me fix so. Up. Oy vey. Didn't put these back up. I was like, uh oh, where'd I put those? Black, blue, And we will need some heat shrink tubing. There's plenty of heat shrink tubing in here. That's that's way too much for one of these. Yeah, that'll give us both sides. We're just going to follow the, uh, the color scheme. So it wants blue on the, call it the, uh, the open side of the lever, black on the other side. So we'll go ahead and get it set up that way. 
and we'll get these tacked on there. We'll get going. Um, here. How's everything going, Liz? Yeah, I figure since we're going all the way back to the board, um, we'll go ahead and show ourselves the, the length that we need. Give ourselves plenty of. Just be able to up. Other joints move our drink tubing up. Oh. Black decided to like run off, so be that the long way. And normally I would go through and get my uh, fight air gun out, but for now I'm just going to be a barbarian and Break it down using my soldering iron. So there's our end stop wire, a nice extra long piece of wire. At least we got it on there and we know we're good. So we'll wrap this up on itself a little bit so it's not flipping around on us all the place. Get this installed, take the other one out and install this one. Oh, nice. Yeah, so for those of you that may not be aware, Liz 
will be doing a birthday stream on Wednesday. This Wednesday or next Wednesday? Next Wednesday. So, yeah, definitely let's uh, wish her a happy birthday and go hang out with her. Spend the time. I think she's going to be streaming, I think. Are you streaming all day? Most of the day, all day? Just going to pop this one out, put the other one in. Making sure to get it in the proper orientation once again. The lever is going to be facing um, down when it sticks through here. Looking at it this way with our two lines, the lever is going to be facing down this way. I'm going to go in there like so. We weren't going to do any soldering until we had to do soldering. So we've got it inserted from this side. Our two screws went in and our lever is facing down towards this open gap. So we're good there. Uh, if you're using a levered micro switch installed as shown, Use it without a lever, invert it so the button is at the bottom and it will line up with the encoder M3 socket head tap screw install. Okay, awesome. Now we need to go to our extrusion and we're just going to peel this off and hopefully get all of the little metal shards off with it. So it's great that they uh, that they keep that plastic on it when they do it, but you still wind up with metal shards in it. So you gotta do what you can to wipe that stuff out. No metal shards. <laughs> no metal shards. Okay, we're going to need our M3 spring loaded nuts. Two on each side with the holes both facing the end. So 
Pick an end. Do there. Go on the opposite side. Definitely need to make sure that they are on the opposing sides. And then that piece that we were just using is going to slide in and the, there's little notches on these um, edges that'll slide in to the groove on that end stop or on the uh, extrusion. Get that lined up, it'll slide right in there. And it's, it's going to hit this one side here, which isn't open like the other side. So you wanna make sure it's nice and up against that once you start tightening your screws down. And we're going to use, what are we going to use? Four M3 by eight. See what we got here as far as screws in the main kit. These look about right. So the main kit uses uh, the black oxide and the upgrade kit uses stainless steel. So if we need to, we may see about mixing and matching some with my own stock. And all we're trying to do initially is just get the screws started. We don't want to tighten them down yet. We just want to make sure that we can get all four screws started. Hey, Mr. Wizix, how's it going? So far, you've got LDO Motors, KB3D, Polymaker, Polar Filament, Capricorn, um, Community gift cards from Bamboo Labs, Batter Hackers, and Printed Solid. Discount code from Capricorn and Breedgate. Wow. Got quite a lot going there. I was trying to get more for my uh, birthday, but I think I got hampered a little bit with the, uh, with the Chinese Lunar New Year hitting. That's really good. So definitely go see Pez Liz and hang out with her. One, because she's cool. Oh, and two, you might win something cool as well. Okay, so start each of the four screws. Once all four are started, take care to ensure that your 2020 is fully seated up against the end of this piece here. So. I just apply some pressure and tighten all four of those screws. Yeah, everything's last minute because of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, I did get a couple, so that's that's good. I did get a couple, um, and we did. We got quite a few there, so that's good. And I'm not as well known as Pez Liz is well. And I haven't made, like, um, I haven't really talked to Greengate that much. I've talked to Polar Filament, but not a lot. I just run into them at the shows. But I definitely need to talk to Polar and Capricorn more at the shows this year. Um, I don't know why I haven't talked with Brendan Salt. Okay, so we got all four of those installed. Um, the gearbox preparation. So we had this piece. 
uh, that we went through and did all the heat set inserts. We're going to add another bearing on this one. Well, thanks, Liz. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get better. I still need to do things for the stream. I know I need to still get things to do with the uh, channel points and stuff like that. One of these days we'll get there. So holding your part like this with the with the curved blade point there, this is where we're going to put in our other bearing. It should once again line up and press fit in there. Be fairly tight, so you may have to be careful about getting it in there at an angle. That's where you may see me grab one of my wrenches and come with the flat piece. Get in there. It won't get into the overall piece. That's too big. So it did say that you could use a, an M5 screw or bolt. So let me grab a M5 bolt and put through the center there. And I'm going to use that to basically pull the bearing in and get it seated. You make sure that we're nice and flat in there, as flat as we can get it. And once again, rather than trying to look at this side to see if it's level, look at it at, a, at an obtuse angle through the side here. Just make sure that the bearing is contacting this printed piece all the way around. And if it is, then you know that you're at least in line with the printed piece and you're good. So that bearing's in there now. Once again, I just used an M5 button head screw, which nicely covered that bearing and kept it nice and straight as I Oh yeah, definitely a lot of new um, competition. Sliceworks is really good as well. Um, but yeah, a lot of definitely a lot of good competition in the filament industry now. And I really like Polar Filament. They're a really cool little company. So I've got some of their filaments already. I just need to get more and actually get to printing with it. So we've got a couple of latches here um, that we need to work on and we're going to work on them by taking a uh, two and a half millimeter just something that will fit through the hole when does it we'll go with the two go through there yep and what we need to do is break it free from its um print in place support so we have to be very careful but you're going to try and just pop it free from its print and place supports so that it will uh, lever out. Okay? That's one. We need to do that for the second one. Just make sure I'm holding this straight up and down. And I'm applying pressure as I pull it out. You don't want to try and crank it at an angle because you will break it versus popping it loose. We've got those two popped loose. Now, where are we at here? Um, gearbox front latch. So we've got our part like such. And we're going to bring this part. In this way, okay, yes, yeah, so in this way. So we've got our fillet side over here, and there's a little printed key print or keyhole there. This little printed nub goes into. 
So that would be how that lines up. Is that? Okay. And it looks like we're coming from this front side with a M3 by 12 from the front and then M3 by 6 from the back. So let's figure out what our sizes are. Because none of these baggies are labeled, which is always nice. So I'll probably have to rearrange these after stream. I did not realize they were not labeled. These are M316s. Sixteens, which makes these probably the twelves. So that's twelve. And these were eights. Yes, these are eights. Eight. That M3 by 6, but the only M3 by 6 that I might have in here would be a button head. Okay, we get this lined up and We're going to come at it through this front piece here with a M3 by 12. Through the M3 gearbox back with an M3 6 screw in the back and M3 by 12 screw in the front. Okay, so we're going to do an M3 by 6 through right here into the heat set. And into the heat set insert there. We're going to need a 6, which may wind up having to be a button head because, like I said, I do not see a M3 by 6 bucket head. Pretty sure that these button heads are in six. These are even eight. So I think we're just gonna do an M3 by eight. Unless it's not unless it's too big, then I'll have to grab an M3 by six out of out of my stock. We'll take a good look, and if this is too big, then we'll have to go with an M3 by 6 button head out of my stock. Good work. Was able to get it uh, nice and tight, and I'm not seeing. And I was not seeing it bend out, but I think I might have just. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go with an M3 by six, out of my own stock. Like I said, I. Oops. Knocking stuff around.
You'll see, I may have an M3 by six socket head in one of the other boxes I have here, but if I do, one, it'll be the, uh, the silver color, and then two, um, it'll just take me a while to dig. But I think most M3 by six in the Voron builds would be like a flathead. Hey, Ronnie Mac, welcome in. Yeah, lots of smaller companies, which are good. Um, and they're they're getting a lot of different colors. Like somebody's like, well, Polymaker doesn't have this color. Well, chances are somebody else does. So just go and look. You'll find the color that you want. Um, okay, so installing the gearbox will finalize the path out of the gearbox. For all wiring in this half of the ERCFA. If your wiring is pre crimped, for example, if you're upgrading from an ERCFA V1, make sure all wiring goes through the cable channel now. If you mess up and don't catch it until later, it's much more time efficient to cut and re crimp than to disassemble the gearbox. Okay, so what they're talking about is in our gearbox. Uh, let me kind of do it like this. Our wiring goes through this top gap right here. So it goes out by the end of the extrusion, not down in this gap here. So our wiring I have curled up here, need to undo this. And route this behind that extrusion piece. Like they say, now is the time to do that before we start getting all our other wire or all of our other components in here. And then we don't have the ability to easily route stuff through that chain. So now that we've got it pulled through, we'll go ahead and just wrap this back up for the time being. Kind of stays out of the way. much out of the way as possible. Okay. Lat screws. Now we're going to thin the arms of each of the side latches that we did. We're gonna use an M3 by 20 screw. Do these longest ones. Going to verify links on these as I go to use them. And three by 20. So we're going to take a latch. We're going to kind of just open it up. And these are going to go. We're not going to over tighten these screws. We're going to be careful. This is going to come through the top here. Yeah, looked weird, but I get it now. So this is the this side is the part that we put our heat sets in. So we're actually screwing directly into the heat set, which is nice because that becomes our axle point um, for this for this part. So we'll go through the heat set. Through the printed part there.
And then the other side just goes into, we'll say depression on the other side, meaning there's just like a gap or depression in this side that that screw end goes into. So we shouldn't have any big issue there. So we're gonna do two of these, screw them all the way down. Once again, uh, don't uh, go to the point where it's super tight and, it, and it'll cause us any binding issues. Just screw these down in there. Okay, because this is going to grab hold of the top and then latch down over this, this bottom piece. That's how that's gonna go. And we only do the one side. Looks like we only do the one side now, not both. Now we're gonna start working on the gearbox assembly. Yeah, so interestingly enough, uh, Mr. Wizix, so we're going we're gonna to take a deviation real fast. We're on page 36. Let me jump back to 15 or so, because we did all of our heat sets first. And I like that they link to the page and then come back. So that's always nice. Use the CAD file introduction. They talk about wiring remote. So when you wire remote, your front piece here, rather than having the words, will have spots for three different um, um, microfit connectors, right? And it's got the needed lengths that you need for the wires so that you create your motor wires with the Molex microfit three connector. And then, so you'll do the, the lengths for both of your wires and then it tells you to make your servo, encoder, and end stop wire. But once again, this harness is to bring your wires just to this plate. It does not give you the full length to go back to the MMU. Now, you can still do it like you're gonna do a remote and run all your cables here, and then just make pigtail jumpers from here back to the MMU. And that may actually be worthwhile as well. Um, but for now, I just went ahead, made a length for this wire, and we'll extend the other wires as we need to when we get there. Um, but, but the option will always be to come back and, you know, make, reprint this piece so that we have the cutouts and then make those pigtails. As appropriate. Yeah, it depends on whether you're running a board at the cottontail, which would be with the IRCFA, what they call a local board, <laughs> versus a remote board, meaning you're taking your wires all the way back to your main MCU. Right. So there was nothing here about wiring up these switches with any length. The only type that they talk about is making this pigtail right here, which will not work if you're running, you know, these links are not appropriate to take it back to the MMU board. Because each one of these comes out to a different mount point or a header point. So, and I'm just gonna desk scroll real fast. Okay, so we're going to get into our gearbox, which means we're going to need a tooth idler. And I'm going to just pull these out and see if they've already pulled the flange off one of them. I don't think they did. Turn it. Yeah, none of these have had the flange removed, so we'll be removing the flange ourselves. So, 
two for the motors, one for um, this application. And if I remember right, all you do is you just take a pair of pliers and just peel this outer flange off. You'll just be able to give it a quick twist. Should be able to just give it a quick twist. Yep. Uh huh. Nope. Somebody's got the trick here. There we go. That aside. So there we've got our gear popped out. Now we've got a couple of different pieces here. This piece right here, we're just going to take our gear and set it down in, and this is going to allow us to center and get the right depth for our other piece. So the tooth gear here, we just push down in. And make sure it's flush with the bottom. Then we're going to take our actual pulley piece here. And this just pushes right down on it. Now you do want to line up your holes with the grooves in your piece here. So things should line up. Don't force it so that they line up with the actual teeth in the in the uh, pulley. Push that down. And now we're going to take M3 by 8 button head screws. So those would have been the button heads that we had. Where's the M3 by 8? Yeah, I need to look at that West 3D Ambrosia filament. I keep seeing it. I keep hearing people talk about it. I haven't bought any yet myself, but it, it does look pretty good. So I, I will probably pick some up here in a little bit. And there should be five of these that go in. You want to be careful as you're putting these in that you, I'm going to try and, and get them all started and then go and work on, on uh, actually tightening them down all the way. That way I make sure that everything stays nice and centered. You want to be careful, like it says, do not over tighten. Uh, if you do, you will strip the plastic or the pulley, and then you'll hopefully have to have an extra pulley that you can use. I've got a drawer full of them, so I'm not too worried, but at the same time, I don't want to push my luck either. How's it going, Aaron? Welcome on in, Aaron. to make sure that all of these are tightened down to about this you know where they're hitting the printed part heads are fully seated but we're not uh 
super duper cranked on it. Whoops. All right, there we go. And we'll pull this apart now, press this out. Piece now. Now we'll need our D shaft. Need some thread locker D shafts. Two or we'll go ahead and get some thread locker on this. Be careful not to get a lot on there. You don't want it coming out and coming in contact with your printed parts because it will make your printed parts brittle. Red locker on here and getting these ready. Twelve point seven millimeters. We're going to have these two printed washers, and there's a little. It's Definitely not going to be easy to see here, but there's a little stepped area. So the, the smaller part of the stepped area will go towards the bearing, which means they need to be facing away from either side of this big pulley. So we'll grab our D-shaft, stick one of these on with the little step going to the the long length side of the pulley. We're going to go with the metal flat side of our pulley towards the long shaft of the pulley. And then we're going to grab our other small printed piece. Once again, the smaller step facing out towards this nub. Now what we need to do is get to approximately 12.7 or 13, because it doesn't have to be 100% fully accurate. So we're gonna quote unquote eyeball it and get close. That good, and we're going to tighten the first grub screw to the flat. The next one on the side of the shaft. So we're looking just like that. We've got the little blue step washers on each side. 
those who will link her fit in the bearings. Now we're going to gently insert the D cut assembly through the gearbox bearing. So we've got our gearbox here. We're going to go through the two bearings. Hopefully, we don't need to um, stand the heck out of this. That would just shaft this. Okay, and it says to adjust it so it wobbles as little as possible. What they mean, I believe, is the tensions here on the screw heads. Let's see, because it's going to be easier to tighten these down now when we've got them in bearings. All I'm doing is looking down along this edge here, seeing where the gaps get bigger and smaller, and I'm applying a little bit of pressure or taking some away on each one of these bolts as need be. Just very little, like, we're talking like little, like eight turns, quarter turns, just to. I think we're pretty good there. Um, we need to install the gear belt and make sure we do that now rather than later. be the 188 GT26 RF so this would be the 188 um 188 GT2 so we just need to make sure that this goes over and around our gear
Dot dot there. What's next? Looks like now we're going to do the other side in and add our motor in. We're going to start with another one of our pulleys. Pop our set screws out and lock tight ready. So Aaron, how's the Trident build coming? I should say the rebuild. And what was the reason for the rebuild, by the way? Is it just wanting to change the color scheme or something else? So we have the NEMA 14 and a NEMA 17. This is going to be for the... The NEMA 14 is what's called for in the bomb. So we do have NEMA 17. And then we've got the NEMA 14. We're going to use our NEMA 14 here. And get our pulley on there. And it looks like the set screws for our pulley are going down at the bottom. And then we've got we've got two different um, tools, one for NEMA 14, one for NEMA 17. Since we're using the NEMA 14, we're going to use that one. Standard typical, set this on the ledge, and then use the other piece to align our pulley. far as the height goes. Plugging up that screw. Making sure we're on the flat, it's moving too much. Tighten it on the flat, then tighten the other side. There's the NEMA 14 installed, or the uh, pulley on the NEMA 14 installed. Now on our motor arm, once again, this is the arm that has the Work for Easy Board logo on it. Um, I'll have to double check. I wouldn't have printed this, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I may reprint this if I find one that has the MM, M, yeah, Big Tree Tech MMB board. Um, and the way this the motor goes on, well, let's get our piece in the right orientation. It'll go like this, and our motor wires need to be coming out this way towards these two slots for wire management. It's going to go on there like that. We're going to use some M3 by 16s at the top two points. We're going to have M3 washers on those. Three by 16s. Three by 12 for the lower one. Once again, the M3x16s get washers on them, but the M3x12 does not. I'm 
grab our three by sixteens. And the M3x16s both have slots, so this bottom left point, the M3x12, kind of becomes the, the pivot point, so to speak. Once again, make sure that as we're mounting it, our wires are coming out this way. We've got the two slots here, so the motor will be able to slide around. Most likely, we'll start it off like that get our belt run, and then we'll be able to tighten it up to get our tension on our belt. So, got that there. One with the microfit connectors for connecting to an external MCU. One without connectors for use with the internal MCUs like the Urkfa Easy Board, Bellow Fly, blah, blah, blah. That's the one we're doing. Now we've got a spot for another bearing. And this is going to, of course, be sitting proud on this side as well. So we'll get that bearing pressed in there. And then we will make sure and look from the other side and make sure it's fully seated. We can try the same trick before and use a M5 bolt to make sure that we get that nice and seated in there. Once again, you just want to look at an obtuse angle to make sure that it's fully seated all the way around this, you know, the inner edge on this side. And it looks like we're there, which means we're good on this side. Optional microfit wiring, which we do not have, so we're not going to be pulling this wire through here, down, and into a connector port here, um, which means when we go to wire our router, we're going to have to do something. So, need to do that. Ear motor wire into a four pin microfit. Nope. Probably do still want to put that zip tie right there now just to provide some strain relief on those wires. Grab one of these. If I got to cut this off to add more in here later on, that's that's no big deal. I'll do that too.
So here's where you insert the other microfit connectors. This would be, you'd have to install all the other wire connector bundles in here at this point. And we're gonna close the gearbox up. Did it say to jump to a specific page? It didn't, so we'll just keep looking our way through here. Once again, when we go to route our wires, we need to route our wires in a specific order or specific path. So when we go to install this on the printed part, we need to run our wires through that same gap that we did before. Let me get my wires. Ready, give it a little twist so they stick together and slide them through that gap. And our um, a bearing goes on the end of the D shaft. We make sure that our um, belt goes around the shaft. We get everything lined up and just press fit this on the end of the D shaft. Release there and lined up. We're going to need a M3 by 12 at the top and an M3 by 25 at the bottom. So, well, And a 25 at the bottom. Everybody's being pretty quiet. These are twenties. Forty. Do not see M three by twenty five in here. Luckily, I have some. Okay, we've got our motor wires. We'll pull those relatively taut there, through there. And once again, if I need to extend these wires out, I'll extend them out um, as needed or cut and trim them as needed. We've got our M3 by 12, our M325. Everything's nicely aligned and pulled through. 
we're going to slide a logo plate. And all this is, is just a, it doesn't have a logo. It's just a colored plate. So it'll make the logo stand out a little bit. And the little tab will go to the, to the top. So we line that up, push that down in there. It all look, it, it's two-tone now, two-color. Right, so we got that there. We're going to need one of those M3 by 40 bolts that we found. That's going to go at the top here. Line that up, just get it started to push through. Get it lined up. Put in our other latch. Probably would have been better if I reamed these out, but get our other latch piece. Make sure that that's lined up. Okay. And the bottom side of that is another M3 by 40. It is going to go the full length here. I hope everybody's doing well tonight. Just kind of lurking and hanging out, chilling out, relaxing. Fully in there. That'll latch down. So we got both of our latches in. Now we're going to take our our knob. It is, it is printed with a D shaft on it. So we're going to line that up with our D shaft and just press fit that on. Careful of where you're grabbing hold of when you're doing this so you don't bend anything. Should be a good tight fit. This is a super heavy duty tight for me. To be able to allow you to turn your your system without uh, needing to use the motors. Okay.
There's our gear system. Now we're going to do the gearbox belt tension. Um, we're going to loosen these top two. Loosen our top two motors here, or uh, top two screws up here. They are loose. And what we're looking for is about three millimeters of deflection when we press. So I'm just going to pull this back, tension this up. Tighten that down so I can line this piece up. And I'm going to look for three millimeters of deflection. Getting. Should be good there. Tighten the other side up. We've got our initial uh, tension set on that motor. We've got our knob. Practice the belt needs to be much looser than you think so it doesn't stall the motor as the printed wheel. Yep. Check for rubbing and binding. Twist the knob. Make sure there's no rubbing and binding. Make sure that your belts are lined up. If you need to adjust your, your belts, you want them to be running. Um, Feels tight, but I don't know why. Not rubbing here that I'm. Take a look at. It. Twist the knob, check for rubbing and binding, take your time to get it right. It's very misaligned. You can loosen the gearbox screws to allow realignment. So this would be probably these four screws here. I'll do that. I'll, I'll loosen these and crack them just a bit. See if maybe I just have some things tight down a little bit too much. listening and building a 206 piece samurai oh nice yeah this works a lot better i think i just had these cranked down way too much so it was causing it to bind up a bit oh yeah there we go that's a lot better Okay, there we go. Now we've got the other piece. This piece is the top. 
We'll get six M3 by eight screws total. We're gonna have three of them. Now this piece has the little tab opening, so that's probably gonna line up with our tab over here. So we'll uh, open our latches. Them out of the way. There we go. Right there. Well, they should be out. Okay. Where does this go? Symbol shows. Get the wire down in this area. A little tab will slide into that spot. Go on there like that. So the tab's down in this slot. Wire's forced forced down into that slot. And we'll throw three M6 by eight screws, or M6, M yeah, three M3 by eight screws. Hey, Westry, how's it going, sis? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Sitting here building for just a little while. Um, we're probably gonna run just until about nine o'clock, maybe sooner. And call it quits. So Miss Dragon is uh, getting on a plane tomorrow morning. So I do want to spend a little bit of time with her this evening. Closing up our little wiring panel here. I'm not tightening everything down just yet. I was just trying to get everything aligned. I'm going to take it down until it starts locking in place, give it a little bit of a torque. So that's what we're looking like. Got our nice cover over our wires that are pulled through. Latches will lock in. Now we're going to put a piece on the bottom here. Flip that over for now. And we're gonna need a couple more of these. You're feeding horses. Nice. Nice. So glad you're you're able to get out there and feed the horses. Okay, and this piece is going to be this one. And it's gonna go this orientation. Those on there like that. Just kind of flipping it over to make it easier to see and line up. This is going to go around our extrusion and where our wires come out of. So it'll capture where our wires come out of. We have to undo our latches. Maybe not. We go over them. Not a whole lot of space there for these wires to go around, so make sure you're, you're good to go there. This kind of is somewhat worrisome to me. I, had I thought about it, I would have taken this apart and filed this extrusion down, be extra careful of it. But uh, it is what it is now. Okay, all of those are screwed down now, so 
there we have it. Oh, so this is just the exploding view telling me what parts we're going to use. This is putting the top panel down, uh, route the motor wiring through the cutout in the gearbox top panel and out through the bottom near the 2020 version. Take care to align the logo plate with the recess in the bottom of the gear box top panel plate. And secure the motor wire with a zip tie. Hey, we've already done that. Bottom panel. Put it on with three screws, which we have now done that as well. And we've got our wires routed to that spot. Neat. That has us done with the gearbox. So we'll put this off to the side. Let me get my wires in, done up. I don't know why they don't want to stay this way. Gonna set this over here for now. That part's done, 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 done. And next up would be the filament blocks themselves. This is basically, I think it's gonna show us how to do one, and then we basically do that and build all of them. So let's grab the filament block parts. And really what I'm going to try and do is grab a set of filament block parts. These, I see one of these. Um, I think I did a part version of these. Bottom, top, side. Top piece. I don't know what's what here. He's married. He's in the out. These, these may be for part of the cotton tail. Is get them out of the mix. Okay. So we've got Main pieces there. I have the, call it the zero plate. There's zero. And I do have, I do have the numbers printed out like the, the contrasting numbers printed out. I do not know if I will wind up using those and trying to, you know, uh, put those on or not because like they are super duper small and fiddly. We may not put the numbers in here because they would have to be super glued in. And that is going to be just fiddly. 
instead we may just use the marker and write the, the you know fill in the numbers or write the numbers in there with a sharpie i don't know we'll see we'll see how i feel because this part i may do off street trying to take like the number six thing and putting it in the slot is going to be a pain in the arse But I did print them out. And these plates can come in and out, I believe. So I, there's always an option of reprinting it with the MMU down the road. So it goes over there, these over here. Like I said, we're going to build one, and then the rest of them will be, you know, just repeat seven more times. Oh, thanks, Create Experience. Yes, this is the same color combo as the Trident because it's going to go on the Trident 350 over here. So it's the um, ASA Pop Pink and Pop Blue. So I think I have all the main printed parts over here. See if there's anything else I need along. So. We're going to start with busting out some of the print and place supports. We'll grab our little flathead screwdriver. Move the print and place supports and the filament block parts using a small screwdriver. So, in this block part here, we'll have a couple of pieces. We'll have this little built in piece right here that we'll have to kind of fish out and break out. I got the, the small little crescent piece in the front. And this piece here, it looks like it comes out. I don't know how much it comes out from this side or the other side. Work that out some. Looks like there's a little bit of support piece right in there, that little angle support piece that we're going to break out. Just ever so slight wiggle one way or the other with the screwdriver, and that piece does break off pretty quickly and easily. Sounds like it's breaking off quickly and easily. Out now. That little piece came out. Now we've got this big piece up here and this little tab right here that goes around our ECAS fitting hole. And these are like one layer joining piece. So they, they do pop off fairly easily. And if they do break, it'll be relatively simple to Come in here with the file and file those pieces that broke off too soon before. That piece, if I really wanted to, I could take the file and file that on. I'm not sure if it's going to make it. Got to get this big piece here out. Come in, give it a little bit of a lever on both sides. Here, these little things start snapping and it makes you freak out, but you'll see all that printed support just came out and it leaves pretty nice surface on the inside. So, very nicely done on these designed in supports. So, we got that piece all done on this side. Oops, let me verify. Nope, we've got this little nub piece down here that needs to just 
breaks off. There we go. This piece, get our orientation. There's this piece right here, comes out. So we're going to put our screwdriver in there and lever that out. That opens up nicely. And anything else? Does not look like. This piece is weird because I printed it this way. It looks like it was printed that way. That's weird. That little piece comes off. I think these are just oriented to print differently. Print in place support cleanup. Ideally, the support snap cleanly out of the part. This is the case. Congratulations, your print settings are dialed in. If not, or if you just want to be extra critical, now's a good time to go in and file things down. I think we are really good. It does talk about specific areas that will be of importance. Make sure that you're really nicely fully cleaned out. Um, I think we are good. Oh, I know why. Because I printed these pieces in a few parts, I think. Yes. That would be why, because I actually printed these in, in the two parts versus the single part. That's why piece on. There, there's that. Um, repeat for all the bases in the top hat, which we, I will, like I said, I'm going to do one of these, and then we'll come back and we'll do the rest uh, one at a time. Our Bontech gear assemblies. Somehow I feel like the one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Supposed to be a set of six or a, a six cart, and I've got twelve sets of bearing. So don't know why I've got twelve sets. We're gonna go ahead and use these, and then if we run out and we need more, there was more that came with the uh, upgrade kit. So y'all know the drill. Um, You will lightly grease the bearing before inserting it. And we'll find the bearing for the uh, drive gear that doesn't have a set screw. That's the one that we're going to use. We'll take the two burr nuts and the other drive gear that takes the set screw. Put it back in there. That will leave us with our drive gear our two needle bearings and our shaft. So we do need to grease these needle bearings. Grab our EP2 syringe lubrication system. We're going to take our drive gear. We're going to take our two, um, what do we call these, uh, needle bearings. Stick them down in there. Open up our grease. Probably grab a uh, another paper towel to have it at the ready. 
is what we're going to do. Hold our needle bearings in there with one of our fingers. Put a little bit of our EP2 in here. Take the shaft, push that, gently line it up, push it through, and it's going to start squishing that EP2 through those needle bearings. You should start to see that first bearing or the top bearing start popping up. Hold it down with your finger, push that shaft through the rest of the way, and by doing that, it's applying pressure. All the way through that to squish all of that grease into those bearings. Now I have a properly greased up set of needle bearings with a surprisingly uh, little amount of waste. And this will pop into our part. Now, another thing that I need to look at on these is these are the two part. Um, the two part uh, halves. So it looks like we would use self tapping screws to screw these two halves together. But I don't see a note about using the two part halves. So has anybody done an IRCFA and used the two-part top hat? And if so, do you know what uh, what screws you put on? Not seeing anything in here. Well, I'm going to say it looks like it, it's M2 self-tapping screws. So that's what I'm going to use is M2 self-tapping screws. Surprise, there's nothing that says anything about it in here. I'm going to grab my own M2 self tappers because I prefer to use the ones, at least as many of them as I have, that have the, uh, oh, the socket head cap screw top to them because I tend to strip those out less often. We're going to use this to assemble these two halves together. And these aren't snap ends. So when we would have put these together, we would have had to have set our part in and slid the rod through. But because we printed it into two parts, we can line up our bearing and rod. Or, yeah, our drive bearing and rod. Get these pressed in without having to do the um, through push alignment. I think I'm going to hit these with a reamer reel, a three mil reamer. That is a three mil shaft.
to remount the the hole that the shaft itself goes through. To ream that out to make sure that it's a nice three millimeter hole. And then once again, our got the larger side of the drive gear on this piece. We're going to line that up, then press that shaft so it comes through the side there. We'll line up the other top piece and make sure that it's oriented to match the cutouts. It goes together like that so that we can get the shaft flush on each side. Right, and then we're going to put this together with some M2 self tapping screws through these holes. So I did see a little bit of stress there over here, and I think it's just because of the socket head cap screws. So if I use the standard um, M2 self tappers, they may fit a little bit nicer without causing that issue. So I may have to use the other ones as much as I dislike using them. So we'll do that on the next one. Got our uh, piece put together. And once again, if this was a if this was a full piece, it doesn't have the cutouts to clip it in like you would on a CW2 or something. So you have to put your shaft all the way through with the needle bearings already there. You want to make sure that this spins freely with no issues. Filament blocks. So we have some magnet orientations here. We start by cleaning up some stuff and getting it out of the way. Magnet. A few magnets in here. Polarity matters. Install the magnets in the middle recess so that they repel against the magnet in the filament path. Example, same holes facing each other on both magnets. Okay. We say to do these all at the same time to make sure that our magnets are in the correct orientation. So I guess we will go through and prep all of these at the same time. So let me get to go through and get all these ready to go.
Sorry about this. I'm just going to try and get all these pieces together so that we've got full sets of things ready to go. So I guess this will be part of our prep work for this um, for the next stream or this stream later on. These going. Time and be careful so we don't break part of the uh, piece or, or gouge part of the piece that's needed. And or don't stab yourself. That part is, I think you kind of get into a rhythm of doing these about the time as you're done with them.
Say something westery. She went on lurk mode. That's a Hey, Tech Jeeper, how's it going? We are back into kind of preparation cleanup mode. So we're busting out um, some print-in-place support on the ERCFA V2 parts. So we just pop those out. And everything comes out looking nice. So we're just going through and getting things prepped and ready. We've got to do this for eight times, and they say that it's best to do them all at the same time to make sure that you put your magnets in the right order as you're going through and doing this. So <laughs> I decided it was probably, I was only going to do one at a time, and then I decided, no, it's probably best to do them both at the same time. Or do them all at the same time. And there we go. I finally tried to stab myself with the screwdriver. You know, it was bound to happen at some point. Wouldn't be a uh, printer build stream if we didn't draw blood, right? And it relax. Oh, Okay, I think we got everything situated. A bit of blood. Not the major. I think, yeah, I think we got everything popped off. Make sure not to use his fingers. We're doing all of our um, pieces here for our. Uh, Drive gears.
It's Viking! Pezliz, you're back! Whoops. That. That. So make sure that our M3 holes are reamed out. So Maker Viking, um, how are things going with Fenrir? Haven't heard much on the progress of that lately. All right, last one. Hey, Ramon, how's it going? Early today. Okay, so we've got all of those done. Now we need to start putting our needle bearings together. Get a little bit of our EP2 grease. Big shaft. Shaft. Start feeling the pressure. Go ahead and just put your fingertip over the other side of the needle bearing. Push the shaft the rest of the way through. And now your, um, your dry bearing here is greased. Line up the fat end with the fatter end on your printed part. And shaft. Line up the other end. Two halves match. Sure that that shaft gets pushed in and is flat on both sides, doesn't protrude out, and that your drive gear still spins. There's one more down. Now we just need to do that a few more times.
need the square nuts. We don't need the drive gears. Drive gears will get used a little bit later on. So we'll just get these needle bearings in here. The EP2. Put the shaft. Rip off any of the excess. And make sure that they run free. Ooh, Viking has a birthday soon on March 3rd. Is Viking doing anything for his birthday? Hey, Big Jano, how's it going, my friend? Welcome on in. So who all is going to Rocky Mountain Rep Rat Festival here? in a month. I, for one, will be there, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody again. Hopefully, I thought you were going, Big Jano. Once again, we're just kind of doing assembly line stuff here. We've got eight parts to do, so. Here it's just easy enough to just start getting them going. Try not to drop your bearings. Definitely don't lose your bearing. But if you lose your bearings, maybe 3D has all the parts you could use for your 3D printers. So as long as it's 3D printer bearings or bearings for your 3D printer, laser, or other CNC-based machine, visit our friends at KB3D.
they have saved me when I have lost my bearings. And those bearings that I lost, I still have not. I still have not found the bearings that I lost and bought new ones from KB3D to replace them. And it's driving me insane. But it's probably to the point now that I will find them and I will, I will not realize that those were the bearings that I had lost and was looking for all this time. Hey, Hybrid Robotics, welcome in. Thank you for the resubscribe. Subscribed for seven months. That is awesome, my friend. That is awesome. So we are here working on our parts now. We've got our gearbox put together for our Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder over here. And now I was going to just do one cart. And it pretty much told me, yeah, belay that idea, stop being an idiot, and uh, do them all at the same time. That way, when you put in your magnets, all of your magnets are lining up. So, decide, okay, I will sit here and do all of my um, parts, build them at the same time. So, I'm pulling out all of my Bontech drive gears. And this is why an Urkva is more expensive to put together probably than most other things. Because there's, like, if you have eight carts, you have, like, at least eight, if not nine or ten. That's a Bontech Gears. And these are just, depends on which ones you get. I mean, these ones all have Chinese language on them, so... I'm assuming these are not the genuine Bontec gears, but uh, if you did get genuine Bontec gears, you would definitely be putting out a pretty penny just for drive gears. Ooh. But each one of your each one of your carts, lanes, whatever you want to refer to them as, uh, requires a set of Bontech gears on a Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder. Where like the Trad Rat, each lane is a printed part, an M3x8 screw, uh, I think it's a 623 bearing, an M5x8 or an M5x10, and an M5T nut. And that the M5 is to mount the lane to the extrusion. Um, everything else is simply just an ECAS fitting and an M3 or an M3 screw and a uh, uh, 623 bearing. And everything else is, you know, all your drive gear mechanism is on the selector itself. So. A lot easier that way. Okay, so now we're back. We've got our gears ready to go up here. So these are all ready to go. Include the one we were working on. These are our main lane pieces. These are all those. Okay. So we're back to looking at these pieces. Yes. The actual filament blocks. So magnet orientation polarity matters. Install the magnets in the middle recess so they repel against the magnets in the filament path. Same poles facing each other. Recommend to assemble all filament path and base parts at the same time. We're going to put magnets in the middle um, hole of this. 
you've got the rectangle or the uh, octagon, and then you got the spot for the magnet. But I guess I'm trying to see what part these two magnets need to be that they push away from each other. Right now, that makes it look like there's two magnets and they're attracting to each other rather than pushing away. Um, so, yes, this is a kit. Um, so this is a uh, Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder base kit. So, base kit from... Uh, well, it came with the DFH kit for the Trident 350. And we are adding to it with a um, Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder V2 upgrade kit. So that's what we're working on right now is building the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder V2 using the upgrade kit well using the main parts and whenever i don't have it here i go to the upgrade kit parts what i'm doing right now is i'm just putting the lane numbers in so we'll have two zeros so we'll have a zero we'll have a one and these do have a little rib at the end there's a little rib there and that goes down in this recess all the way at the end. So the rib goes in first, which makes it a really tight fit to get this to start sliding into the groove here. Zero, one, two. So the um, the initial kit is three. So once again, the the initial kit was part of the parts for the Trident 350 from Deep Fried Hero. And um, I got a, the kit that I'm using for the upgrade right here is the Triangle Kit. But I got one from Triangle Labs and one from the Lead Labs, um, both off of AliExpress. Um, the plan is to build the one out of the Triangle Labs kit um, for this build, and then I'll build the other one for one of my other Vorons, so that I will have the I have two Urkfas because I should have all the parts to do it.
And then we'll print out the parts and rebuild the trad rack with the latest sets of parts because I built mine originally from a from the closed beta bomb. So I want to get the latest set of parts. And then okay. So we've got that. We want two magnets. They say install them in the middle recess so they repel against magnets in the filament. Still kind of at a loss. I'm going to do kind of like they're showing there, and I'm just going to stack two magnets on for now, and we will make the adjustment or, or whatever when we go to do these. One. All going in there this one my machinations I haven't put them in backwards yet. Okay, so there's those. Got our tag plates installed. Dry shaft bearings. Printed jig is provided. Printed jig is provided. Um, and we're going to see. Printed jig is provided to help you with bearing insertion on the bases. Find it. Yep. And an MRZ, MR8 ZZ bearing. Oh, that's the bearings that we were using, but now I'm down to three. Slide the base down onto the bearing as shown so that the 2020 mount groove in the base may groove on install. Take one of these, stick it there. Take the base, put up here like this. We're going to be pressing these down in this groove here. That works very well. Yeah, like I said, that's the simple fact that I'm now apparently five more of those bearings short. Interesting. Let's 
Okay, and the other pack for more bearings in. Five bearings so over there. Good bearings, we'll talk there. Belt. Decas. Springs. And there's a few more bearings there. Don't know how many we have, but there's a couple. The good news is, is I think I have some of these myself, so if I need to, I can fill in the gaps. And this works out pretty well. So you put your bearing on that hole there. This slides right down in the groove just nicely. Lines everything up. And then you just push it down. And it's perfectly set that bearing. It's like a glove. So good jig there. We've got all those set up. We still have an extra bearing here, which is good for now. Got the uh, V-groove bearing, which is going to be good and important later on. And when we're done streaming tonight, all this is going to stay right here until Thursday. <laughs> Not messing with this. Um, Okay, so we have the bearing installed all there. We're going to install the latch screw. Resist the urge to close the latch before installing the screw. Uh, you'll break the pivot off. So, good thing to note. Um, drive the M3 by 16 screw into the base. The screw taps directly into the plastic, so don't over tighten it or strip. Once the screw is in, you can close the latch with a satisfying click. So we need M3 by 16. If these are them. And they are. So we're going to need our latchy types. We're going to need our basing. We're going to set it the latch right over that um, printed piece. Then we're going to take this and screw it in. And it, once again, it said, do not install it first because that's really tight and you will snap off that piece. So leave it open, put in your screw, put in your screw. We're going to go a little bit uh, higher tech.
Or a bunch in there. Through in there. And a half mil driver. Then once again, we're screwing into plastic, so careful. Now I only um, reamed out the blue part, not the pink part. So the pink part, the piece that I'm screwing the um, threads into, which is why I didn't ream that out. I wanted this reamed out so that it wasn't uh, threading through the blue part so that it would be um, free floating and easier to latch. And I think we're going for flush here. Okay, and once again, now that we have it on there, tighten down, should get a satisfying click. Everything opens up. So, one there, and we will keep going. We have seven more to go. How are you doing tonight, Hybrid Robotics? Um, so here's my preference so far. I haven't built an ERC for me, so I don't have a preference. Um, I have I have built a trad rack. I have not operated my trad rack. So I still need to rebuild it with the latest sets of parts. And um, I I have built and operated a MMU2 and I busted that off. So damn. I'm gonna have to reprint one of these. That sucked. Um, so yeah, I have not built one of these before. Um, this is going to be my first time. Like I said, I have built the trad rack, just have not operated it. I built the MMU2 for the Prusa Mark III and ran that. And that ran well. And this is feeling like it's not running in either. And I somehow feel like I may have, maybe not. Why is, maybe not, and I will say maybe so. I uh, busted that off too. Be darn close to it. This one might still be salvageable. Wonder. Oh, that just came. Why did I get in on one and now I've had two that have busted off? Spread it in. Is it an issue with a screw?
I mean, there's definitely a step there. All right, I think what I'm going to do is hit this a little bit with a, uh, like a two and a half uh, drill bit. Because I think those printed parts on the inside are just a little too tight. And when it's trying to thread the screw in, it's. So two goes all the way into the hole, two and a half. Two goes all the way in, but it's, I don't know if it's the threads on my screws or what, but it's, it's too much resistance and it's, Busting this because the step is right at the base of this. So I'm not going way deep. I'm just going to take it a tad bit deeper because of where that step is. I'm afraid if I don't, I'm going to break every single one of these. As it is, it looks like I'm going to have to reprint two of them. Okay. Number three, we have opened the hole up for a little bit so we should be able to get it threaded in a little bit before we start biting too deep. Yeah, it's just the, the, so it's like three millimeter through the through the shaft, but as soon as you hit like two walls in on the thick part of the printed part here is where it steps down to a point two. And so it's trying to dig into that plastic to thread itself. And we're expanding the plastic as it's trying to self-thread. And that's right where it breaks off that piece. Okay, so we got zero, we got three. One and two we busted, yay.
do uh, the rest of them. Of course, I have no idea if I can get the the lane numbers back out of these printed parts with the way that they're done. So I may have to reprint some lane numbers too. Yeah, bill paying time sucks. But I will tell you, I built the trad rack. I like the concept of the trad rack. It follows along like the MMU where you've got a single drive gear and then each lane uses a bearing. And that makes it a little less expensive because you're not doing a full set of bond gears per lane like we're doing right here. And it also, um, you know, from everything I've seen, still works really well because I was running an MMU2 for a while, and that's now over at uh, Evil Diesel's house with the Mark III that it was uh, installed on. So I'm going to, at the end of this year, when it's all said and done, I'm going to have two Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeders, the Trad Rack, and the MMU-3, which will be on the Mark IV, and I will have the Black Box Tool Changer. So I will be set and ready to do not just multi-material, but multi-color on various printers. I'll be set to do multicolor and not a single one will be a bamboo AMS. Okay, so there are the lanes that I have available now with the two gaps because I busted these and there's no way of recovering and getting those back in there. There's a way. There is a way. Um, there's always a way. I'm just going to open this up a little bit, not the full length, because I don't want to, I still want it to thread in, I just don't want it to, um, like, try and thread in right at the very, very base that is what was causing it to bust out. So... Let's try something.
Okay. So we've now got uh, all eight lanes set up. Stuff out of the way. And where else are we at here? 9.30. Got our latches put in. Now we're talking about the other portion, which we had started to put a couple of these in. We got a zero. Install the magnet so that they repel against the magnets in the base. So, that means that these two magnets, so the magnet in here, so this would be um, attracted, this is the repelling orientation. So this, goes in the center hole and the repelling orientation repelling orientation would be up so this is repelling means this side of the stack go in the middle hole Once again, push away from each other. That's what we wanted. So, make sure that these patch. Make sure that these are always in the right direction. I'm going to try and make sure that these are fully down in there and flush. I 
I do that same thing on these. All those are nice and flush. And the bases are the opposite. We've got the bases in. We need to get our numbers in. There's zero. Three, four, Okay, we've got those in. Now we need to put our e calves fitting in. So we've got a bunch of those. I'm got theirs, I've got mine. I These ECAS M4s, um, how can I put this? They're a pain in the tuchus. To get the blue piece in here, it's a pain in the butt. And then to get it seated all the way in here can be a pain in the butt as well. So I'm going to put the this piece in there and get it nice and flush. Then I'm going to center the blue piece in. And then I'm going to push for all eternity to try and get it in there. And you saw how hard it, it went in there. So that piece, not too bad. The blue piece is the part that is a pain in the butt. Oh, damn it. I don't know why. I probably should have tried to run a drill through that filament path just to make sure it was good before that, but too late now. At least too late for most of them. This is a three. I don't want a three. I'd want a two, if anything.
Darn it. Yeah, if anybody's got a trick on getting ECAS put in easily, I'm all ears. I would probably say one of the first things you want to put in here should be the ECAS fitting before you put anything else in here. Because if you split apart with the ECAS fitting, if you've got a bunch of other stuff in there, now you have potentially have to reprint a whole bunch more stuff or you're going to have to bust the part to dig magnets and other parts out that you need to recover there we go we got those in there now my hand hurt we got the ecas fittings we have the tags um gonna break these out and Add them with the rest of them here. There we go. Okay, so that step's done. What's up next? Base, wrap. Perhaps the filament, but it's not in use, so it doesn't fall out of the base. You choose to use the M3 set screw version of the base trap recommended. Make sure the set screw is screwed flush to the base trap and doesn't protrude. Also make sure the filament hole in the base trap is clear and free of stringing. Okay. These are the base traps. It looks like we would put the M3 by 3 set screw at the top. So, set screws. Do I have set screws? Not look so as part of the base kit, so that must be something in the other kit, and that would be these little chewy bits right here. So we will pop these out, and of course, these are going into plastic and only into plastic, so we are not going to um, put any. Loctite or anything on those. It's going to be the 1.5 fiber. Screw these into plastic. Not fiddly at all. Put it flush with the printed part.
There's one. Like I said, not not fiddly at all. Not fiddly at all. And you gotta make sure that you're going in straight so you don't bust the printed part out. Yeah, I think uh, just about the majority of all my stuff is uh, Ryobi. And then, like, I've got the old, like, the, the blue Ryobi stuff, or blue, purple, whatever that color is. The old style Ryobi stuff was my first set. Then I got some of the newer stuff. Got a couple of DeWalt drills as well. Why we got. Walt. Other than the fact that Ryobi is carried in Home Depot, and we don't have a Home Depot here. We only have Lowe's. And if I go down to Southern Pines or Fayetteville, I still only have Lowe's. I have to go back into Raleigh to get into a, uh, a Home Depot again. Okay, so I have 10 of these printed out. I don't know if I actually needed 10 or just eight. I think it's just eight. But we'll see. I'll, I'll go ahead and just do the eight now. And if I wind up needing a couple of more when I go to assemble things, then I will, of course, do the other two. We'll just do the eight for the eight filament pass right now. Save the rest of my and three by three grub screws. Base trap. Okay, so what are we seeing? We're seeing we need a bottom lane with what looks like a closed latch. This um Lip right here is where our base trap will go in. It just feeds right into that. It feeds right into this cutout here. Slides back in there, make sure it's nice and flush with the front. And then 
this is zero, this is zero. We're going to take this piece, this little curved piece, and it's going to go down in that opening. This is where our two magnets need to line up and be opposing each other. We need the latch open, apparently. But this piece fit right down. That's interesting. in that way maybe I am not all the way back in there well, that's far to go There we go. Tight fit. Tight fit that. Open the latch. Next, line up the filament path vertically on the base. Make sure that the base trap fits into the slot. Squeeze gently. They snap together. Close the latch. Repeat, repeat the assembly for the remaining board. Okay, there's one. Zero, two, one. And so this piece is going to slide into that gap. Oh, just push it all back. So this is one. This is one. Line up this with the gap there. Then good snap together. And we close our latch. I mean, so far, other than these being just really, um, I'll say a lot of parts, so far, I mean, there's a pretty good number of parts just in these pieces right here. Um, I mean, like, everything's going together nicely. And this is definitely, you know, definitely do it as a uh, an assembly line type of thing, and everything should work. We're going to get these put together, and this is where we're going to stop for the night. So if anybody has a raid suggestion for the evening, please get it in now.
There we go. We've got our seven lanes together. Eight lanes together, sorry. Um together, pop pop. Close the latch. What our assembled top hat with the hinge or everything here looks like. Does the insert the top hat? So this piece into the groove. So we've got our bearing in there. We've got our two screws in. There's this tab here. Line up with that tab right in there. Then our bearing's going to drive uh, gear is going to line up. I think it says insert the top hat hinge into the groove. Close the latch. Press everything together. So, oh, I think open the hat. The latch. Add this into the groove. Down. Latch it. Make sure that everything. Presses together. See? Yeah, it does show that there is a little bit of a gap there. Latch. Fit check. When snapped together, the filament block part should pivot freely on the rear hinge. Repelled by the magnet spring, so the repelled magnets. Base trap should move smoothly without binding or preventing the parts from closing or opening. Parts interfere or bind as you press them together. Then you will need to disassemble them. Use a small file or hobby knife to clean out any things. Blah, blah. Move the filament path and set it aside. Repeat for all filament. Move the filament path. Filament path is the top piece. I need to put screws in all these and we'll continue that or uh, Thursday. For now, we are going to Call this a good time for the stream. It is what, 10 o'clock? Any, uh, nope, nobody's turned in on what a good raid target would be. Let's see who is potentially running right now. Astro Connect, Duck. Arcaros, Maple Moose game. The Jang's doing some Lego. Grillo's on. Brits on. Science. Anybody? Yes, no, maybe so. Did I lose a lot of people? Okay, so let's go over to our friend Creatix Brit. Check in on her. Thanks everybody for being here. Thanks for hanging out. Um, please go with me as we raid out. We will come back Thursday and continue putting together the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder. And I will see you guys on Thursday. The switch makes it look right. So, once again, thank you everybody for being here. Uh, we'll come back together on Thursday and we'll finish putting together our Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder or as far as we can get on Thursday night. Thank you, Shawdell. Thanks, Steve Poole. Thanks everybody for being here. We're going to raid out to Creatix Print right now and I will see you guys on Thursday. Thanks everybody. Bye now. <laughs>